A Harsh Reality. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. The investigation into the murder of model Jasmine Fiore is far from over. Police this morning are looking into whether her ex-husband, TV star Ryan Jenkins, acted alone. They're checking to see if he had help disposing of her body and if he had help escaping to Canada. On August 15th, 2009, Jasmine Fiore's strangled, mutilated body was found stuffed in a suitcase and tossed in a dumpster in Buena Park, California. This case has become synonymous with reality TV as Fiore's killer, Ryan Jenkins, was a contestant on Megan Wants a Millionaire, and her murder coincided with the airing of the show. This is the story of Jasmine Fiore and the reality television show, Megan Wants a Millionaire. Stuff like this is really hard. We've done a couple things where it's like a murder on television. It's it's really hard because we both worked in entertainment for a long time, and there should be a lot of uh, checks and balances in place to have something like this not happen. To have someone, you know, we talk about mental illness and reality TV, we talk about violence, aggression, problematic people that get attention from being on these television shows and, and what happens to them afterwards and the struggles that they have. But this is like worst case scenario stuff. I think too about, did you ever watch Top Chef Just Desserts? No, I'm familiar with Top Chef, but oh. I never watched it. The runner up was also like, real like a horrific and you know i'm gonna let you if you want to google him you can i won't get into it because we have this case to talk about but when you think about all the things that bring a person to a place where they are on television and they're performing on television they're on a reality show or a competition or a scripted show you think that there's a lot in play there so when you see someone kind of slipping through the cracks and and able to do horrific things to other people like murder them it's especially disturbing it's it's just so it's hard it's hard for me to to wrap my head around and you know reality tv has had an interesting timeline and now mm-hmm. we're in the late 2000s 2009 we've talked about the jenny jones mm-hmm. show murder and that was 1995 so fast forward almost 15 years yeah and i'm sure there have been improvements in, in vetting people but the turnover is so high and i think the the pressure to crank out these shows with so many contestants mm-hmm. that they probably you know, and I think we found why this one fell through the cracks, even though it's re- it's unacceptable. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I'm sure people knew they wouldn't let it happen, but it's something that I think could have been avoided, provided that they were like, "Hey, listen, this person is not going to be good yeah. for this show." And just reality TV is is such an interesting world to be in, and it, when it coincides with personalities like this, not mm-hmm. in every case. But, and for, I don't know, for some reason, like the late 2000s was just like a very interesting time on television and, and, you know, reality TV has moved so much and I feel like it always be, it's always the same thing, but always becomes something a little newer. Yeah. And, and changed and, and, It's also you know. really reflective of the culture too, when you think about Me- Megan Wants a Millionaire, which you'll talk about, but the, the culture changed so much from the early 2000s to the, you know, 2010 to now. And when you're casting something, like I just rewatched all of Rock of Love, and you're like, oh, this is a great personality. Look at this, like, bombastic person who, you know, you don't know what they're going to do next. They are drinking a lot of alcohol. They're going to be great for TV. And you see it through the lens of, you know, 2007 versus now where it's like, do they have an issue? You know, I think we're all a lot more sensitive to, you know, do they have mental illnesses? Are there some things that we need to know that maybe we wouldn't have checked 15 years ago that we should probably check now and make sure that they don't have a certain history that we want to televise. I feel like we're kind of, you know, it's the learning curve of this has been really hard to deal with in TV and negotiating what people want to watch versus what is safe for people to participate in. And, and you know, these shows can reward poor behavior. Yeah. I mean, depending on what the poor behavior is, that's fine. It's, you know, it's, it's entertainment, it's television. You can choose to watch or not to watch. And people that are people that sponsor these shows can choose to do it or not and you know i think also we could be part of the problem by by watching them and re-watching them yeah. and getting syndicated and they live forever and unfortunately in this case with jasmine fury and and, and megan wants a millionaire 
it's now going to live forever connected to a reality show, which yeah. is a really, a really strange kind of sad place and thing for everyone. Mm-hmm. So first, of all, I'll get into a little bit into the show. Great. And then just to give you a little backstory, because the show happens before the murder happens, but they happen very, very close together. That, so, oof, that's yeah. also incredibly fucked. So there's a, a chronology in there. Megan Wants a Millionaire it was a reality TV show. Aired on VH1 from August 2nd to August 16th, 2009. Very, very short. Whoa. The show revolved around 17 men who had to compete in order to win the love of swimsuit model Megan Hauserman. She was a contestant on Rock, Rock of Love. Rock of Love. And the show had problems and controversies. Not Rock of Love. That had none. None. That Sorry, was uh, very benign. It was, but this show already did, so it wasn't. The problem is the show wasn't necessarily poised for success anyway. Yeah. So whether, unfortunately, this happened or not may have not changed the outcome of the show. And if mm-hmm. anything, it probably, well, it, it'll end up on a lot of lists of yeah. horrible things that have happened on reality shows, which I'm sure is yeah. horrible for everyone involved. And, and, you know, but if you're looking for more notoriety, and I don't, Megan, yeah. I can't speak for Megan Hauserman. I'm sure the answer is no, but you probably found more... In this unfortunate circumstance, if the, then if the show played out. Oh, for sure. I think this is this is something that I've, and again, this is perverse, and I'm admitting this to people who listen. I've sought out footage of this to give myself a sense of what went on, you know, just from knowing VH1. I also think this is one of the last VH1 shows in the VH1 machine. So I think once you got cast on something like this, you assume that you'd be on a bunch of different things, you know? And of and- course, you're... you're- behavior mm-hmm. is like, oh, this person's really dynamic or is it yeah. bombastic? We need to have them on other shows. And yeah. if it was an MTV one, you're on Road Rules Forever. Or, totally. Or, or, it's like Bachelor. You know, it's like you're in Bachelor Nation and let's put you on Bachelor in Paradise and let's get you some hosting gigs. And they invested in you already. Mm-hmm. So you already have like an IP about yourself and yeah. you already have a personality. So then they've already invested there's equity in you already totally. so why not put you in another show and you already people are always like oh i gotta see i like her i don't like her i don't like him or them uh, i want to see what they're going to do next mm-hmm. instead of just having fresh people every single time yeah and megan's ip i think yeah. is is also like pretty important to this story and that like i'm sure versus like maybe a daisy of love where it felt more emotionally intense you know megan was very flippant and she was very like you know, superficial in these ways. And that was kind of her brand is to be like, I want money, I want status. So in the casting process, perhaps, and I don't know any of this for sure, maybe they were looking for different things than they might have looked for on a, I guess, a more traditional reality show. But that's no, that's not an excuse. I want to say that too. It had low ratings from the very beginning. So the low ratings started Mm -hmm. immediately. I don't know if it was the competition of other shows. Mm -hmm. They weren't interested in that... Not, she needs someone to play off of. Yeah, uh, she's not. She, I don't think she can carry it. For whatever reason, things don't. Just because it's a reality show doesn't mean they work. Many of them yeah. fail. Mm-hmm. Some of them succeed for a very long time. And you know, she wanted to be a trophy wife. Mm-hmm. That was what she wanted, and you know, didn't make any, you know, um, allusions to anything else. Mm-hmm. She wanted to be, you know, a trophy wife, and you know, made, like I said, the people they bring in. Yeah, she's are literally some- always in a metallic bikini. That's all I remember of her. And Ryan Jenkins, who was a contestant, he murdered his wife, Jasmine Fiore, on August 15th, 2009. The show was airing during that time. <sighs> we'll get a little more in the chronology of it. The airing of the show it was already midway through, and they pulled it out you know, out of respect for the family of, of Jasmine Fiore. And also, probably, it's, it's not a good look. No. You know, I don't know if, if people thought maybe, I don't know if executives like were like, this could be the, I mean, this could be a, a kind of like watching a car crash type thing. Like yeah. A, a very dark thing to watch. But, I mean, it's also in very, very poor taste. So that I, well, you know, I believe they did the right thing. Yeah. I mean, the show, and the, if the show doesn't feel responsible or culpable in some way, that's fucked too. You know, obviously, this person killed this other person. But the show was so, like, you, so intimately involved in the timeline that you can't ignore that. So they only aired three episodes initially. There were one through three was already aired. Mm-hmm. Four and five were on YouTube. And I don't know where it's at now, but there's episode six 
I don't know where it might exist. I haven't, I didn't look to see. I just watched, you know, some of the, like the first episode. And so there seems to be at least six episodes and what's available is probably, you can probably find now, mm -hmm. you know, now you could pretty much find anything online. So yeah. if some, somebody has it somewhere or you can yeah, seek it out. Definitely. So the plot of Megan wants a millionaire, 17 single millionaires. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I suppose. Yeah, I use assume. loosely. Yeah. Loose millionaire. Yeah. Loose, also you know. a millionaire, you know, like, do you have one million? Do you have yeah. 17 is, do you have, million? Is it one million liquid? Or yeah, is it... Yeah, what are we talking here? Let's let's see those tax returns. It's like, my parents are going to give me their house when they exactly. pass. Exactly. It's they a said, nice house. That, yeah. I mean, does that make you a millionaire? Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't think that was really important. It's just... No, the, they didn't the... get... And from my remembrance of it, they didn't really go into that so much. So with the help of Megan's friends, she had a couple of friends helping her out. A couple of buds. The last man standing got to get Megan as his trophy wife. You just get her, I guess. You just, you just, she just gets in the car with you on the way out? She would bring celebrity guests to help her pick which contestants stayed and which mm. were eliminated. So on the show, Ryan Jenkins said he had a net worth of $2.5 and he would say things like, I'm so James Bond, I'm going to rock it. Also, how, how is net worth calculated? Do we know that officially? Is that a closely guarded secret of Forbes? Sometimes I wonder if they just pick numbers. Yeah. You know, it's because it, it doesn't really necessarily matter. Yeah. You know, it's it's really the per they probably look and, you know, they, the show's style to be mm -hmm. wealth based. Mm -hmm. Not like challenges where you have to like jump in mud pits or anything like that. Yeah. So maybe they do do that. I don't know. I think not, so. I don't I think there's any mud pits. Jenkins identified himself as being an investment banker, which is fake. Sure. Hedge fund <laughs> guy. Creative director. Here's what he does. He turns player girls into princesses. I'm not even sure you're speaking English. A, a player girl into a princess? I'm going to say this and... I mean, I'm only using this as, as a reference. Job? As a reference, but he, have you ever heard the term, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife? Is that how it goes? You ever heard mm -hmm. that one? It's yeah. like that, I believe. But he does that. He does turn hoes into housewives. Player girls. Player girls into princesses. Yes. That can't be legal, just in terms of nobility and uh, paperwork. Also, play on player. Heard of that? Uh, Megan Hauserman once told TMZ that Ryan Jenkins seemed like a nice guy. Very charming, very educated, and mature. I don't know how She much... said it like a little, like, pissed off kitty. She was like, mm, very mature, mm, nice. That's my Megan impression. Okay, so in March 2009, within a very short time after filming the episodes of Megan Wants to Be a Millionaire, he met swimsuit model Jasmine Fiore mm -hmm. in a Las Vegas casino. Mm-hmm. How long, I don't know, I'm going to give you a little trivia question. How okay. long after they met did they get married? I'm going to say eight hours. You don't know. You don't know what, <laughs> you don't know what the traditionalists they are. 48 hours. 48 hours, whoa. Playing, hard to get, the slow game, just really getting to know each other. They knew first and one last name <laughs> between <laughs> the two good. of them. That's good, okay. So they had, you know, a quick ceremony in Vegas. They were already there. Mm -hmm. And... It was a very tumultuous relationship. Mm -hmm. They didn't know each other. Yeah. So there's strangers. things you're getting, like, fighting and getting mad at. It's it's not, I mean, not necessarily the fault of the person. It's like, I didn't know this about you. It's like, well, mm -hmm. we got married in 48 hours after meeting. And, yeah. you know, I feel like sometimes, you know, people can be very impulsive. It happens. Sure. Well, also, like, you're drinking, like, you're in Las Vegas. You know, you're not, you're not sober. You're enamored. There's a lot of feelings happening based on hormones and substances and just the, the fact that you were in Las Vegas, Nevada. Maybe he just got off his, you know, reality show trip, yeah. you know, and, and Jasmine Furious, you know, she was kind of, you know, she would be like, like do advertisements on Howard Stern and, you know, mm -hmm. she was like a, a model and, you know, she was, you know, kind of working in a, in a, in a very kind of, kind of you know, those environments where it's, you know, like could be a lot of excitement and, and yeah. everyone's, you know, looking for a thrill and, and, and that's where they're kind of at in life. Mm -hmm. And with that comes with problems, probably their personalities. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's his personality that is ultimately the very, very bad. I mean, yeah. even, even if she's, 
has things where she's not a perfect human being. No, but he's, he's a murderer. A, yes, you know, he like, is. It's like, it, what what makes a person capable of doing that? And all of those, you know, red flags, those benchmarks, it's like, if you have that capacity, I'm sure it's shown through in in little and big ways before that. So, supposedly, what the impetus of this is Jasmine was playing poker with a group of friends at the Hilton, and she was being rude, was putting Ryan down, and you know, you know, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, she. He's probably annoying. I mean, he is. Uh, he's he's annoying. coming off of Megan wants to be a millionaire. So he, you know, he, I'm sure he's bad personality, and then maybe flexing. Like I was just, I'm on a TV show, Ugh. like that kind of vibe. And again, the show is just beginning, so it's kind of at that, you know, interesting cross section of yeah. like it's it's running right now and reality TV is like an interesting thing still to people and it still is now. Yeah. You know. And but- at that point again, it was it was very VH1 shows were their own brand. They were very successful. And I, I remember when shows like that came out on VH1, they would advertise them so aggressively. Like ever everywhere. And then the the whole group moved later to the Ivy Hotel for drinks. She spent a lot of time in the bathroom on the phone. Okay. Which I feel like if you watch a television show or movie, that seems like the thing that is the, why are you in the bathroom? Yeah. Who are you on the phone with? Yeah. Uh, we're in Las Vegas. I'm very, very drunk. I'm on Adderall. And, mm-hmm. you know, listen, I am i don't know that for a fact, but I, I'm not. Passing judgment on, on Ryan Jenkins is like mm-hmm. least of my concerns. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to make an assumption that there might be more than one beer involved. And a, no. and a terrible... Uh, person with a terrible past in this situation yeah and it's kind of what i was saying before too where it's like the thing the impetus for the marriage it's like all of this is fueled bad decisions are often fueled by other things besides the person themselves i mean including the person themselves so it was 12 30 a.m and she said she was on her phone with her mom mm-hmm. you know well, it probably wasn't on okay. the phone with her mom yeah but whatever you my know mom I mean? goes to bed pretty early yeah first doesn't and then he was screaming, who are you talking to? Mm-hmm. However that played out, you know, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't there. I couldn't really find the info. It's not like there's audio of it. But you can assume that they were, you know, yeah, who are fighting. you talking to? It's just my mom. No, it wasn't. Don't lie to me. I, I That's the, what I'm gleaning. Yeah. That word again. From this. And at about, an, about an hour later, they went up to their room and they were still fighting. So let's fast forward a little bit. Police... And also, like, I didn't put it in triggers, warnings in the beginning. And again, I'm not leaning into that, but there's some parts that are kind of, like, harsh. Okay. So according to police, Fiore was found strangled, placed in a suitcase, and found Saturday morning in Buena Park, California. Oof. Which, if you're familiar with the landscape of Southern California, I would say it's, I think it's east or west of Santa Ana, so it's mm-hmm. a little bit... South of Los Angeles, not that yes. you know, within forty-five minutes of LA, and mm-hmm. from you know, you know, it depends five, six hours, depending how fast you're driving, four hours from from Las Vegas, and her teeth and fingers were removed Ugh. from her naked body oh. to help, you know, not have her identified. Which, oh God, listen, I mean, it's it's hard when you just got married. You know what I mean? You you got get married if you know. A few months previous, so it's all kind of happening. He actually called the police to report her missing the day the suitcase was found, mm, conveniently. Convenient. And he wasn't, no other contact, and they could not, like, find him immediately upon finding the suitcase. So then they for- formally named him as the suspect. Naturally. And I think the only suspect, which... Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, also, that's listen, if clear. it's not, you know what I mean, then, you know... Uh, you, if it's not you, in mm-hmm. fairness, let's say go back in time. If you really, if it's not you, then show show up. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know what you have to do. Yeah, answer some questions. Yeah, do what you, it, just, you supply DNA test or whatever whatever they're asking for. And they issued a warrant for his arrest. And this is in the Orange County, so I guess Buena Park is falls under Orange County. I yeah, guess it's I probably right at the top of Orange it's County, kind of on the way to like Disneyland. So they found Jenkins car with an empty boat trailer attached in Washington up towards Canada. That's going to make you look pretty guilty. 
A man matching his description was spotted at the tip of Point Roberts, a peninsula in Washington, accessible from the United States by boat overland from Canada. They believe he just walked across the border, I guess. That's how you, okay. how you do it. And when Megan mm-hmm. Hauserman, is that right? Is it Hauserman? Yep. She was afraid to leave her apartment thinking, I thought he's going to come after me next, which not an unfair thing. No, I mean, I mean, you did just, and not even romantically, but you did just reject him on national TV. He clearly has the capacity to kill people. I, yeah, I think that's a, a pretty sane word. So how she was identified was from the serial number on her breast implants. Oh my god, that is so sad. Yeah, that was the that was like the one oh. part of this where I, you know, I don't really do that many of these. Oh. It's it was like I, it was just like a really again, the whole thing is very, you know, it's not like it was any more or less said when you hear things like that when things get re- like a human being gets reduced to a serial number on yeah. a yeah, it's, it was it was it was it was tough. Um, it's really that's and, and again the psychological place you have to be to mutilate a human body to that point is also just so incredibly disgusting. Police trace Jenkins to Hope, British Columbia, and he's over the border. He had stopped at the Thunderbird Motel on August twentieth, paid for three nights, did not check out on the twenty third. The manager checked in on him, and he was found dead hanging from a clothes rack by a belt so he mm. coward and yeah killed himself and you know he had a he had a past i mean she i think made a report that he bruised her arm or he pulled mm. her by the arm and who knows what else i mean that's things that were reported he had a history as well mm-hmm. but it was things that happened in canada so when they yeah. vetted god him mm. it was just the united states yeah which is I mean, how much more does it take? To- <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like that will never happen again. Like that, there must be safeguards in place so that if someone's from a different country, and there's a lot of Canadian people that are on American reality shows, that that wouldn't, that discrepancy or like, you know, I don't want to, you know, badmouth casting people, but they 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 do things in service of getting things done for the show as quickly as they can in a point where they want the producers to be as excited as they can about who's casting and sometimes things fall to the wayside. It's a horrible thing to, to have happen and I, I can't imagine. I, I, I would imagine there's new rules in place around this case. Yeah, because this would fall on a lot of these lists of, mm-hmm. of you know reality shows that have you know just had really bad things happening either during it or around it and you know again that's there's a lot of people so it's I guess it's going to happen, but there's just certain things that I feel mm-hmm. like I think could be, you know, avoided. Uh, yeah. With a very, just a little amount of work. Yeah. And if I recall, they also used a different vetting, like background check, because they were Canadian. Are you going to, am I still in your thunder? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. That's Yeah. They, they uh-huh. just didn't. I think they just were like, all right, well, good for the U.S. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, And I get maybe doing you know, Google searches, even mm-hmm. if they have somebody like a researcher, it'd be like, hey, just look this person up, see if anything yeah. jumps out. You know, the now you, I mean, there's, you can find things with a simple Google search with, you yeah. know, very little, you don't even have to spend any money to do any deep dives and yeah. to, to find something. But according to Jasmine's former boyfriend, Robert Hosman, says Jasmine was a beautiful person. She was a very caring individual. She loved her family and friends. A lot of the information you seeing the news is not true. She's a beautiful person. I think these people were saying, I didn't get into it, but like, you know, that she was uh, whatever, had a attitude, whatever, you know, those things yeah. where it's like, I'm wild or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's like, like nah. no one deserves to die. Yeah. Like, it's like, that doesn't like, make it feel, I don't uh, want to hear it. That's such you? bullshit when people say that where it's like, nobody deserves this. Yeah. I don't care what kind of person they are. I don't care what they've done. Like that is not okay to try to sh- essentially say- shame someone post-mortem for their lifestyle. She's just a be- she's just a beautiful person. She had a lot going for her, so I just wanted to add add something and yeah. a lot of people had a lot of nice things. And then, as far as Megan Hauserman, I you know was looking up some yeah. interviews with her, and you know she I think she, in 2010 she got like a DUI or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, and I think she's probably we're just trying to find her way, and she seems to be doing okay, I suppose. Yeah, she must uh, be in her like late. 30s now yeah maybe? yeah something or yeah something around there 
And yeah, so she seems to, you know, with all with all that, she seems to be doing. I'm sure she probably lives with a little bit of, you know, I'm sure it's got to be tough. Oh, of course. To live within, there's probably a, a huge talking point though. When it, you know, she seems to still be interviewed, and you know, she's kind of still in the, in the reality world and, and and stuff like that. But she seems to be, you know, doing doing well, and and you know, just a yeah. part of that. You're just now part of that. Zeitgeist? Is that the right word? Like, Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm curious as to what she's done recently, if she's done any reality or talking heads or like kind of things, but but hopefully she's just enjoying her life. And, and like most people, like I, I may mention this to you, I know a couple people who were on Rock of Love, not on her season specifically, but it, it does feel like it is this insane part of their lives that they don't you know linger on every day. It doesn't define them, but it's of a place in time. And now, you know, now Megan's place in time is fraught with this horrific incident and it's not as positive as I'm sure she assumed it might be. It's also like, this is our second full episode where someone has been, a body has been mailed to California. Yeah, so, I mean, I want to say- make it a third. <laughs> 